Hello, 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 gentle marketers. We're back with Penny Pierce. Hi, Penny. So good to see you again. Hi. <laughs> see you or hear you if you're listening to this on the podcast. So in today's uh, episode, we're going to talk about the P of product. Um, for those of you watching on YouTube, I'll show you the mandala again. So now we're over here. We're going more into the yang. So P is more of the yang, the doing energy, and uh, and that's what product is. And for me, um, product, what we talk about in the gentle marketing program and what I'm writing about in the book is, is really this value creation. So creating something that has value and uh, that provides value to the client, right? Not just putting something out there and getting money for it, but you actually want to um, be referable also. That I think that is super important to create the sustainable business is putting something out there that people appreciate so much that they w want to tell other people about it as well. And the other thing I talk about a lot in, in product because it kind of goes together um, also with, uh, with the pricing that we'll talk about later in the profit is, is really this idea of the, the triple uh, win. So creating something that is valuable for uh, the client, but also maybe contributes to the planet. Um, so, so not, again, not just creating stuff to make yourself richer, but creating something that also somehow um, helps the planet. So that's um, what I'm talking about in the marketing uh, field. And now I wanna go into, yeah, what, what comes up for you, Penny, when uh, you think about product. And again, we are doing it the same way as we always do. New, per old perception, maybe a new perception and kind of going into that. Yeah. Well, I like this um, orientation we're doing is um, it's like rethinking everything right. from a new, new perspective. Right. And uh, so I like all the things you said. I think product, you know, I think it has to be a natural extension of who you are, what you stand for, your, your energy, your consciousness. It's a natural overflow from that. So it has to, to you, part of the win, win, win is it has to be good for you. Not just that it sells and makes a lot of money, but that you have fun making it. You have fun doing the production on it and the design of it and all of those stages so that it, it serves a sense of fun. In, I think products that give you a sense of uh, like, this is the greatest idea. This is so innovative. And I love that somebody came up with this and it really works. You know, there's this kind of sense of delight when yeah. you use a product that it's, it's useful, but it's also sort of just cool. And those are I my like favorite how you say that ones. it's useful, but it's more than just useful, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. right. Uh, it's fun to use, you know, and so, um, and you know, that includes services too. You know, we should also include services as well as just physical things. Yeah, because with services, it can be fun to, you know, get the service, and it can also, like the service can be delivered in a fun way. And, and we can also bring the, the result from the service in a humorous way, in a way. So right. Yeah, the, the sense of delight comes in, at least for me, when something's like just one or two angles or degrees off from the, the regular view. Um, it's the regular view is always boring to me. <laughs> you know, that I want something that like sparks my mind. You right. know, a friend of mine calls it a sparkler, you know, that, that everything needs a little sparkler to it. That's so, true. It, otherwise it's kind of this bland vanilla thing that what I always talk about is like, if you only give the bland vanilla service, then people are going to compare prices much more. Because they can get <laughs> the same thing true. from everybody. And so they're like, well, then I want the cheapest if it's the same, right? Yeah. Like, yours yeah. is slightly off, slightly different, then they can only get it from you. And so they're actually right. willing to 
they it's not that they're willing to pay more but they just don't shop around so much because they're like right. this is what i want that that is a good point um i think um part of it is like uh you design it because it's something you want you know you don't put the customer's needs first and say oh they need this it's something that when you come upon it it is um something that makes you feel really really good and you get that that feeling first then you can put that feeling into the product and market it and talk about it with that sense yeah you know and um, it's so controversial because in the past that's the new perception right in the past they always told us, no, 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 just focus all your attention on the customer. Yeah. Again, yeah, what, what saying is like, exactly. start with yourself. Exactly. I, um, I'm a big proponent of not having any self-sacrifice in anything we do <laughs> anymore. So if you're just looking at the client saying, what are, what are their needs that I can fulfill? And you do it because it'll probably sell, you mm -hmm. know, um, then you're not getting a lot out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, that can easily be a, a kind of situation where you sacrifice yourself to some degree. Right. And, um, you know, so somehow it's all one thing, do you know, <laughs> right? You, the client, the process, the delivery, the, the, um, the materializing of ideas into form, that's a really fun part, that whole creative piece to bring that about. And I think anything that starts off the first steps of a journey with that kind of vibration will continue on typically with that kind of vibration and it'll contain it. Do you know, it, mm -hmm. it's like that is the, um, the inner energy blueprint of the, the form. So people will actually kind of feel that when they look at your product or they look yeah. at your service and, and they just, they can tell that there's care, I guess, behind the product yes. or service. I think so. It's like when I first started writing books, I remember saying that I want every paragraph to be a jewel. I want the, the words to carry the energy of what I'm talking about. I want them to be living words that will mm -hmm. totally convey an experience mm -hmm. as well, you know, and, and I just kept these post-it notes up all over that were saying, this is, this is it, you know, go for this quality. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then I, after a, about a year after the first book came out, I got actually got emails from people saying that, that that's what it did for them. I was like, wow, wow. you know, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. What else from you? Because we talked also I'm, about this idea yeah. of the the non physical benefits, and, and and maybe that's kind of along right. those lines. But right. in a way, it yeah, it's it's really that there there's this feeling attached to the product, and it's so hard to express that right on a sales page or whatever but that's i think that's where the the storytelling is so important in 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 marketing uh, we talk a lot about this mm -hmm. storytelling now and and in the book i describe how hard it is for someone that comes from the left brain brainwashing to go into the storytelling they've been mm -hmm. telling us for years now you need to tell stories but nobody actually said how this pro how this works and and so it's really about using that creative brain the right side of the brain and and right. and bringing because with stories you organically share emotions mm -hmm. it's not just the features again right and right. so those are the, the that's kind of the non-physical people can't really describe um, those things, but they feel them. And so I think that's what right. comes up. It's like, you know, it, when there's a process of when there's a story, the left brain distills the story down to the benefit points and features with the bullets, you know, yeah. <laughs> and just give me the basics here, right. you know, and 
but you could do the opposite thing of taking the benefit points and the features and then embroidering that into a story. Yeah. You know, use those as starting points to make a story out of that. So uh, but I think you're right. It, it, this is a blending of the left brain and the right brain so yeah. that it, it, it's a whole holistic way of understanding what this product is or the, and an experience of the product. Because, yeah, because the what, left brain always stays separate and it observes the product from being outside of it. Right. You know, when you go more to the right brain in storytelling or imagining, you can merge with the product almost, you know, and understand it from within. Yeah. You know, and, and that's a whole different thing. You know, a whole different thing. Like you said, when we started, you said, you know, this product is useful, but so the left brain says it's useful because yeah. it sees these, these points, but there's more to it than just the functional side right. of the product. Right. You know, part of that is that it, it, it gives personal validation in some way. Yeah. You yeah. know, like a, a certain kind of clothing that you suddenly see and you think, oh, I'd like a bohemian shirt, you know, mm -hmm. or something, you know, mm -hmm. that when you wear it, you be, you feel better about yourself or you feel something, a certain quality in yourself. Right. You know, or you, you have a certain kind of television <laughs> or whatever, you know, it validates something about you. And, and that's a very intangible thing that we should think about. In a way, yeah, you like you said, you recognize yourself in it and you can imagine yourself with that service, with that product. And, and, and it becomes, it becomes, uh, you know, the service or product, you bring it on a human level in a way. It's not just something out there anymore. You're like, yeah, this could fit into my little world, right? That's what exactly. It yes, exactly. Um, so I guess when I, we're talking about marketing uh, a product, a service, it really is about communicating that kind of non-physical. And so maybe you can talk about that a bit. Like, again, I assume it has to do with frequency and also with communication, how we show up, all of that. Right. Right. We said in the previous, one of the previous ones that, you know, benefits are very personal and features are very intellectual, mm -hmm. you know, that, so benefit points will allow the person to relate to it more emotionally, I think, yeah. in a way. Uh, but also, I think there is a sense that the product might even allow you to, um, I'm just going to turn that off so we don't have a ding dong thing there. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, that renewal is another kind of thing that um, it keeps you from being tired or it allows you to, to rest and rejuvenate or something, you know, or something that works so well that you don't have to mess with it to figure it out. So, so much that it's, that the functioning is self-evident and it's immediately graspable those kinds of things it, that it doesn't take so much effort. Right. I think that's important. When you create it, you mean? No, when that the, the product or service itself should ah. be able to do that. Right. Yeah. You know, that it gives people a sense of um, not only delight and, and kind of joy and, and curiosity and excitement, but also like, Oh wow, this is so easy. Mm -hmm. It's not all that work I have to put into everything else. You know, it's, it's, and that's part of why they like it, you know. Yeah. It's, 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 because in a way, so what you're saying is that we all want, if we, if we kind of go to the, you know, old and new, so the new perception wants more fun. The new perception wants more right brain and body involvement. It right. wants intuitive products. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So it needs to be fun, needs to be easy, like you said. Uh, and and I, direct, direct. Um, easily graspable is what I said. It's like oh. intuition. You have direct knowing okay. with intuition. Yeah. You know, with left brain, you've got all the proof and the whys and the you know logic and the steps and the formulas and all <laughs> this stuff. And it's like, oh. <laughs> but um, but yeah, when you go more to the right brain and the body, you have a direct connection with an experiential reality. 
Right. So in a way, there shouldn't be all these options where I have to choose. Do I want this with this or this with this? No, it's just like one or (laughs) two things, right? Right, right. Yes. Um, Like, you know, when they started to reinvent women's razors for their legs, you know, Uh and whatever. They went to the, the intuitive razor was the first one, right? And, and it had like three or four blades and it was like everything all contained there. And then it had a lubricating like cream or something in the right. thing. And it, you know, it started to have everything all together. You didn't have to have different separate parts. And, uh, you know, it's just an example, but, but that kind of thinking is what right. people are really after. It's like, don't make me have to have too much complication anymore. Yeah, Let's I don't want to be... buy the cream separately. I just want to. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so much work. Um, anyway, yeah. So, um, and I think that part of that joy and delight, I had made a note here about that there's a kind of positive attitude adjustment that you can be in a, in a mood or something and then you can work with this thing and you feel better. Mm-hmm. It's just like suddenly for maybe you don't even think about it, but suddenly it's just like, you know, a sense of relief mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. Um, I'm and so this, this B Corp um, company that uh, I just interviewed f- for the book last week mm-hmm. and they, uh, they make wool slippers and shoes footwear. And the wool is locally here from Switzerland, from sheep up in, you know, the mountains. And, and what she was saying is that her clients, the conscious client, um, they really have kind of this relationship to the shoe. It's like they look at their shoe and they go, oh, you know, it's like, <laughs> oh, I, you know, this is from wool here from Switzerland. And, and, you know, it's from these sheep that gave me the, like, so there's really this connection to mm-hmm. the product and 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 yes they are useful because they they keep their feet warm and you know they're probably i don't know not getting them wet or whatever but yeah but what is more important to them is that they're doing a good thing by buying a locally made shoe they're supporting the local sheep farmers i don't yeah. know so, so it's this connection yeah. to the product and and i think the service connection can be the same thing in this case it's this connection to the same worldview this person the service provider has the same values so i feel really aligned with that Mm -hmm. something like that and as we shift more into the right brain and the body and the heart which i think are all kind of connected and even then to the field of energy around us Mm -hmm. which is real you know and it's conscious everything's conscious um, but when you make that shift out of the left brain into this larger, you know, experiential reality, um, that is why I think we're wanting to go back to nature. We have a sense of interconnection with the earth, with animals, with plants, why we want to be healthy. You know, we want things that are good for our body, that are good for our energy, that help us stay in a higher level higher energy state and keep our consciousness more clear at a higher frequency level. Right. These are, these are the, the motives of the new consciousness, you know, and the intuition age, which I think is happening, starting to happen. Yeah. You know, and so a lot of that sustainability and um, recycling of materials reusing of things in, in innovative new ways that like this is, um, all part of, of spiritual principles, really, Mm -hmm. you know? So people will really pay more and more attention to, to that, which is not just, is it useful for me, but is it useful to the planet? How much, you know, waste does it create? Um, Does it help? Like, is it like, yeah, are the people who create the raw product, are they treated fairly? All of these questions, mm-hmm. right, that mm-hmm. have to do, especially when we're talking about products, of course, have to do with human rights, social justice, all right. of these bigger topics that are now much more in the air and hopefully will be even more in the future. Yeah, and, you know, ne- detrimental byproducts, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and all that. But then when you talk about the same principle going into services that we offer, that's where I think there's a choosing. Well, certainly people have to have wisdom and knowledge about what they're talking about and expertise. But they also, I think, 
people want them to have a kind of consciousness that involves uh, holism, yeah. that involves compassion. Right. And that win, win, win. You know, that that is the place we're coming from. Yeah. So in a way, when I'm choosing a service provider or a coach or something, I don't necessarily buy from them because they're going to deliver, you know, a product to me, but I want them to make the right choices for themselves as well. Meaning that if I would prefer to work with someone who does, uh, you know, shop mindfully and chooses products without too much plastic, who, who recycles and, you know, all of that, if I had the choice, I would much rather work with a person like that. And I would actually, yeah, that kind of comes over in the marketing. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Put in your worldview into your marketing because that's essentially what I'm buying. I'm buying you and so I'm also <laughs> buying your values because if our views, let's just say, you know, people always shy away from talking about politics, but if our political views are completely different doesn't mean I don't you know I'm not going to judge this person but I'd rather not work with them or get services from mm -hmm. them because there's just there's not going to be this intimate conversation right uh, right right yeah and and trust comes and trust yeah some of those things too yeah yeah right yeah and so in marketing then you know you have to again it's like writing a book you want your marketing copy you want the way that you talk about things to represent those feeling states, yeah. Yeah. you know, in addition to just telling, you know, the, the physicalness of it all and the benefits and the features of it all. Right. Yeah. 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 Another thing besides words is I think what's more important now is beauty. Um, if mm -hmm. I compare to like, you know, things from the 10 years ago, we had these websites with like loud red. Oh, I know. Yes. I this and like these the marketeers. <laughs> yeah. Call them. All right. And that just like that immediately, you know, yeah. Makes people want to leave again. So it, it is really, yeah. I think uh, 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 people are more interested in beauty and, and also maybe this connection to nature brings more of that in. Like we are, yeah. we are liking to see a, a website with beautiful images of, of nature yes. and, and mm -hmm. that kind of calms us down rather than <laughs> yeah. flashing. Yes, stuff. yes, yes. I, I, um, I think we are so distracted with the digital stuff now, you know, that we need more silence. We need more spaciousness. Uh, we need shorter things, right? You know, we're not wanting to read long. I don't personally like to read those long sales, you know, pitches that are on websites. It's like, right. oh, just, you know, I wouldn't mind a little story and a little thing, but I really want to know the key thing. And then, you know, <laughs> you know I'll make my decision. Right. Uh, but I don't have the patience for it or the the bandwidth i guess for some of this stuff so and i remember I you air... saying when you redid your website you really wanted to make sure that there's enough white space right i did that because i had beauty too right that's right it's even though it's readability <laughs> yeah <laughs> right and and i did write more copy because i'm a writer you know <laughs> and i thought well if i don't put it here it it, where are they going to find it? You know, right. nobody's going to go anywhere else. So I might as well put it here. If they don't want to read it, they won't. Right. You know, so I didn't overdo it, but, but still, you know, um, and, and make it nice copy. Yeah. You know, anyway, um, I had another couple things here that I had thought of sometimes, um, a product or the service can be a kind of teaching even, you know, like it can educate you about something or mm -hmm. give you an aha experience. Right. And that's, I think, a really attractive thing as well. Um, maybe it's that it was manufactured in a different way or it's made out of recycled, you know, blue jeans that are made out of recycled water bottles <laughs> or something like that. Um, so I like that. And then I love the idea of generosity woven into the product 
and the right. service. Meaning, I mean, what are some forms? Giving a little bit extra, you know, bonuses, that kind of thing. Um, maybe having a little bit of generosity in the price or um, extra um, services that you're entitled to and, and things like that. Yeah. that. It's like when I go to a restaurant and they serve a decent sized, nice meal for a decent price, it's always full, you know, <laughs> whereas the upscale restaurants, you know, and they don't serve much food and it's really expensive. Yeah. I don't really want to go back once <laughs> in a while. Hungry coming out. You know, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, right. I mean, how would you see generosity in, in yeah. woven in? I think um, definitely what, what you said, and um, it kind of weaves into the pricing conversation as well. What mm -hmm. I, I, it's funny because I just put out a podcast uh, today about having fair pricing conversations and kind of mm -hmm. talk about it more in the, in the pricing episode. But in a way, you want to price your product in a way, again, it has to do with the triple win. It has to feel good to you because otherwise you end up, um, I also talk about in the book uh, about my um, underselling burnout. So overgiving, underselling, <laughs> and you just kind of feel frustrated. It's like, oh, I don't even like this work anymore because I feel like I'm <laughs> constantly giving so much. And I'm mm -hmm. not getting paid fairly. And that leads to frustration. So you, yeah. that can actually kill your business. Like you, you don't want to get there. So it needs to be fair for you, for your client. And then if you can build in fairness for the planet, I mean, that's, yeah, that's right. amazing, right? You have like a 10% yes. donation to your favorite charity or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that to me, yeah, would be. Um, it's like pay it forward. You know, it's like the shoe people that are giving, buy one pair and we give one, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. and, yeah. uh, and socks. I just saw an ad for that, that they, they give one pair to the homeless. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, pay it forward. And that's a kind of a service to others is gets worked in there too. I right. think people value that now. Yeah. Uh, and again, I think that will so help with the differentiation you're now not just a bland vanilla brand you're you're different in some way and that you know gets people yeah. talking but in a in a good way and, and and it's not that you're just using it so that people talk but it really comes from the heart as well because you're yeah. good giving um to others yeah yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so so do you have anything else or do we want to summarize the versus new I thought part of how we would develop products or services is um, what would solve problems that others haven't noticed as problems mm. you know to to think a little more deeply about the, you know sometimes we just look at the superficial problem that's presenting right. but like when I do readings for people I always, okay, there's what they're showing to the world, but under that is something and under that is something and under that is maybe something and what's down at the core. What is the real thing and uh, that we can actually address to like get rid of all those other problems that are on the surface? You know, you that solve the so deeper interesting. thing. Yeah. And what that brings up for me is, is in marketing, there's this saying that we, we uh, sell what people want and then we give them what they need, right? Uh, it, it's what they want and they don't always know what they need. Right. And it's, it's so interesting because if you try to sell what they need, often that's not as interesting <laughs> to them. <laughs> They're like, but right. I don't need that. I just want right. this, right? It's right. The, the left brain uh, thinking that this is what I want. Right. And You're it's right. also denial Maybe. emotionally of, yeah. of suppressing old, you know, woundedness and things like that. Yeah. But you can deal with the woundedness in very positive ways that are deeply satisfying. I call it a deep comfort. Yeah. You know, it's um, that, that there are ways to start to tune into that and, and, and maybe make that part of, of your promotional copy. Yeah. 
or something, you know, but anyway, um, yeah. No, I think um, it's, it's a really interesting, um, I, I would like to share a story actually about yeah. a client who came to me for LinkedIn, right? He's like, I need more clients. Uh, can you help me with LinkedIn? And so we talked and it turns out he was uh, in, a, in a, an agency that he just no longer enjoyed. Um, like he was the founder, but he was completely burnt out. He didn't have enough clients. And, and so when I took him on, I said, look, I'll definitely show you everything I know about um, LinkedIn and getting clients but I also want to help you find joy again in your business because clearly what's the point in getting more clients for a business that you don't enjoy anymore. <laughs> and he's like, Hmm, okay, well, okay, deal. Let's, you know, find out. And, and yeah, it turns out that, you know, he had, a, he had to make a few decisions to kind of lower his overhead basically because he found himself just managing without actually doing the work that he came or why he founded this agency. And, and so he had no more joy. He had just a lot of stress. So in a way, you know, again, people don't always know what they need. They just know what they want. Yeah. Yeah. I think this all relates to this trend about becoming more transparent. Yeah. You know, and, and that means clearing ourselves gradually and people who are, kind of waking up to all this new perception and, and the intuition age and all that have been on a path of trying to clear fear from themselves by facing things that they had suppressed and then understanding it. So as soon as you get understanding, it dissolves, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like it does, you don't have to suppress it anymore. And, yeah. and every time you dissolve something like that and understand it, more of your own clarity comes through from your own higher consciousness. And then pretty soon you're getting pretty, you're clear and you're, you're, it's, you, you border on genius in a certain way, you know, the yeah. more you clear yourself. Um, so I think that transparency is a, an important thing that we have to start thinking about more. And I just recently saw, uh, I was looking at different um, platforms for online courses and I found one, I was just looking through it and, on one of the pages on the side, they had, these are the things we're working on for 2020. Mm -hmm. um, da, 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 da. If you think of any other things you would really like, let us know and we'll add them to the list. Mm. Which I thought, well, that was really personal. And I really was happy to know that because they're, what they were offering was real basic and really good and nicely designed, but it needed, I wanted a few more features Right. Um, but I thought, oh, that is great that they're ad admitting <laughs> you know, yeah. and communicating and even asking for yeah. input. Yeah. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have to say the, the, the one company that I really also enjoy being a customer for is, is my shopping cart. And so, you know, they're were like really traditional company in a way, but they have been in beta for, believe it or not, three or four years. So they really just want to build such a solid product and they have mm. their customers, the, all the beta customers, but they're still not going live because they're like, no, but we can even do better and do better. And so <laughs> they keep upgrading it and communicating with their customers. And yeah, you don't see that very often yet, but I think that's mm -hmm. transparency and that will come more, more and more. Right, right. And, and I think people are wanting that more. They don't want hidden things. They mm -hmm. want, they don't want lies. Yeah. Uh, they don't want misunderstanding. They yeah. want that kind of direct clarity and they want to know who they're working with. Yeah. They want to be able to reach, I think, reach people <laughs> too, not yeah. just, um, um, you know, all these articles. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, you have they to want read. to know who's behind the product, right? Mm -hmm. So especially if you're creating a product, they, they want to know, well, who's the founder and you know, who, who's making the product? Who are you hiring? All of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was what I, the other thing that I had written down that I wanted to contribute mm -hmm. to this. Yeah. So, so again, if we compare old and, and new, um, I think we kind of said it all already, but, but maybe just to summarize. Um, well, I think a lot of it is the old is left-brained 
And that means, remember that left brain always makes you feel separate from the world. It's isolated and it's about the individuality mm -hmm. um, and taken to extremes, it becomes ego. Mm. But it always feels that here's me and there's the outside world and we're separate. And so I have to use a lot of willpower, cleverness, you know, manipulations, control, in order to get what I want, because I don't already have it. Mm -hmm. So it, it's out there somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it tires you out mm -hmm. eventually. And that's a, the symptom of all the old perception on, applied to anything. But so in doing products and so forth, that is, um, I'm looking outside of myself at the client, and they're over there, out there somewhere, I have to get them and I have to find out what they need. And then I have to make them buy this, you know, because they're, I don't trust them basically, mm -hmm. you know, so there's always this gap there in the old way. And it's, it always uses too much effort and energy and it creates stress. Yeah. The new way is to feel that the people are already connected to you, that everything's right there with you the needs are evident, you're going to get the ideas easily. Um, and you're working with energy and frequency and um, synchronicity. And, and it's win, win, win. That's the natural state. Mm -hmm. Everything supports everything else. Yeah. You know, and if client likes you, they'll promote you too, you know, <laughs> you know, so it becomes so easy then in the new, the new way. Yeah. Yeah. So if I would summarize, I would say the product or service needs to be easy for you, for them. Uh, it should be also fun. Um, otherwise, why do it? You know, have fun creating it, have fun offering it, um, make it fun for the client also to use and, uh, and, and beauty, make it beautiful. Really that that's how the emotions are getting triggered. If it's a, a, yes. a product or service that is somehow different, somehow beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that's why Apple really succeeded, you know, mm -hmm. when it first started up, it really did deliver on all those levels. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Wonderful. Well, well, I think that's a wrap. Thanks so much. <laughs> Good. Uh, this was a fun back. one. With the next conversation, I think we'll probably tackle pricing. I think that will fit in nicely. Okay. So, uh, all right. See you again. Good. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. <laughs>